principles to principle. Everything I do is based on principles. But you go from being a student to at some point you become the teacher. And then where my brother's at, you become the principal. The first thing is to have vision. You have to see the end from the beginning. So at the age of seven, I was watching ESPN Sports Center. Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice are my two favorite players. And I pointed to the screen. This is the truth. I remember like it was yesterday. I pointed to the screen and said, I'm going to play for the San Francisco 49ers. And so I had three dreams in total. The first one was to play for the Niners. The second one was to have a high on ESPN on the top 10 countdown. And the third one was to buy my mom a home because we came from nothing. We came from absolutely nothing. I remember riding the Pinto and it would backfire all the time. And I would kind of go like this and my friends couldn't see me. You know the new was our car. But I got hurt my last game in high school. Right before we are going to play Dallas South. And every single school said, we don't want you anymore, son. You're already not that big. You're not that fast. But now you're hurt. We don't want you. Nugget that I live by to this day. He said, hey, man, if you can play, it will find you. <laughs> Had to humble myself because I wanted to play big time D1 ball. Before you know it, I'm in what's called a pro day. And so a pro day is when every NFL team that's interested in you, they send their scouts out. No help. I don't need any help. So look at that. And there's something you have to understand about NFL scouts. It's scary. Imagine being at your job in your cubicle, whatever you do. Imagine George right now, someone's next to you. They're not. No facial expressions. They just have a clipboard just looking at right, you. Right, right. They, they never talk to you. You don't know who they are, anything about their life. But they're just, and you know that they're trying to find a reason to replace you. Right. There's a million kids right now in high school that say, I want to play in the NFL. Only 70,000 of them will play in college. Out of 70,000, only 230 will get drafted. Only 150 will play past three years. 0.09% chance of making it right. into the NFL. Right next door. You're taking a step into being impossible to make it. So I take it off. I'm doing it. Usually when I ask kids, say, how many? They say, two. I say, you're disrespecting me. <laughs> 15, 16, no. 17, 18, 19, 20. And I re-rack it. Now these same scouts that go like this, I see them. I, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I told them I'm going to get drafted in the third through the fifth round. I'm excited because I know I can buy my mom a house just with the signing bonus. Right. I'm going to get anywhere from 300000 to 500000 I'm going to buy my mama a house. Here's the keys, mom. First down Saturdays, first through the third rounds, I don't get picked up. Man, I see guys that I know I'm better than. Right. Life lesson. Life's not fair. <laughs> neither, is, neither is fake. <laughs> so the second day is on a Sunday. I'm sitting there watching the TV. I get tired of watching this screen. I say, I'm going to go to church. Put my phone in my back pocket on vibrate. Right. <laughs> During praise and worship, I have my hands up and praising the Lord. All of a sudden, my phone vibrates. <laughs> it's a block number. I don't know who it is. I run out to church. Everybody looking at me. Like, is, this, is this boy crazy? I run out. I don't know what's going on. It's the Niners. The receiver coach says, hey, Otis, we're thinking about drafting the sixth or seventh round. But if we don't, you want to come out and be a free agent? I said, sure. Yeah. So I'm, like, I'm excited. Right? I run, put my phone back in my pocket. Run back in. Right when I put my hands up again, phone goes off. So it happened two more times. The Bills, the Eagles, and the Patriots all go wow. upset. We're thinking about picking you up, but if we don't, would you want to be a free agent? Wow. So I end up not getting drafted, and so I said, man, I'm going to go to San Francisco. Right. So I come in. We have these lockers. They're not even real lockers. They're like something they made from Home Depot. They're <laughs> a big black crate. My name has duct tape on it, and they sharpen my name. But I'm seeing like everybody else's locker, mahogany, all kind of Nike cleats and gloves. And one thing that I learned in life is I use every single thing as motivation. I said, I'm going to take somebody's locker. <laughs> because you have to realize there's 11 guys. There's 11 receivers. Five make it. Five make it. Three of the starters. There's eight guys fighting for two positions. They didn't even give me a position. There's X position, Z position. I'm on the bottom. They didn't even have enough respect to give me a position. And so I would go out into camp and just grind. And at that time, I literally would read the Bible first every night. We're up 5.30, go to sleep at midnight every single day. I, I operate completely by faith. And I wrote out a two-page paper. This is exactly what I want to do in my life. Work with kids, speak with kids, mentor you, build them up, go from campus to campus. Five days later, FCA called me. Out of the blue. And said, hey, this is what you'll be doing. 
And as they talked to me on the phone, I looked at my list, and it was bullet for bullet, every single thing I wow. wrote that I wanted to do. No guarantees of nothing. Just complete trust in him. He had blind faith. He said, no matter what, I just know, I don't know everything, but I know I need to travel west. And I just need to keep going. And it doesn't matter who tries to get in my way, who tries to stop me, I'm going to keep going. And so that's the way I operate. I know what I'm supposed to do. And there's going to be a lot. My own high school coach told people when I ended the draft, because I had friends that were substitute teaching at my school, he's not going to make it. They called me. His story is he used to do jujitsu. The only reason he would go to the gym is because they didn't have any food. And they would give him free food after the workouts. Mm. That's how he started. So the thing that I've developed is actually testing your why. And so I have a why, but testing it. So every morning when I would wake up and I thought about my mom, I thought about everything she went through. I thought about my goals, I would never sleep in. If you could hit the snooze button right now, your why is not strong enough. You need to figure out, do some soul searching, and figure out what it is that you're really trying to accomplish. Even now, I wake up and I have a picture of my daughter and my son right there. Never hit the snooze button. I get up 5 a.m., go to my war room, tell God how mediocre I am, how much I need him, then I proceed with my day. You gotta visualize winning. When I was eight, nine, 10 years old, I used to visualize returning punts. I used to visualize shooting three-pointers. But then, the even stronger thing is visualize what it feels like if you lose. Ooh, what would it feel like for us to lose our home? Because the same people that were telling me that, oh, you're not good enough, you're not fast enough, you're not strong, strong enough, were the same people that asked me for tickets to games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, man, you're like a little brother to me. <laughs> Do you remember that time when we worked out together? <laughs> Those same people will ask me for tickets. I, re I remember what you said. I remember what you said. And just to mess with the mind, sometimes I will get them the tickets. You come watch. <laughs> you come watch and see what the process looks like, right? I counted the cost. I knew at seven it was going to take 15 years to get to where I wanted to get to. But I said I'm willing to go through it. And I remember the very first time I was in a game, I was not supposed to play. I was a number three punt returner. The day before the game, the coach says, Hey, same one that say we won't make the team, right? Hey, we're going to start your apartment turn. I'm like, let's do it. Amen. So I'm back deep. Got my jersey on. 9-11, sold out, 64000 And I'm not paying attention. I'm, I see my fiance. I see my mom. I'm like, hey, mom, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I see the ball in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going like this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> As soon as I catch it, that guy, 6'4", 260, is right in my face. I make a move. He barely misses me. I don't remember the rest. I have to watch it on YouTube to recall all the events. I make a couple moves. The last thing I see about 30 yards down the field is the punter. And our rule in football, to this day, is you better not let the punter take Right. <laughs> right. he's not a real athlete. Right. <laughs> so I, make, I make the punter miss. And then I don't even realize that I might, have, I might score. There's 50 yards left. It's just green grass. I'm just running, my form's terrible, and I'm just running. <laughs> Next thing I know, 10 yards left, I look back, and my teammates are going like this. I'm not even thinking about it. For whatever reason, to this day, I don't know why, but I put the peace sign, everybody chasing me. And I crossed the end zone, and I promised you it was like the butterfly effect. And within five seconds, I, I had a flash of everything I went through in my life. Wow. Within five seconds. I, I, I remember the coach telling me he wanted to make it. I remember my high school coach. I remember all these things, and all I could think to do is go like this. Thank you, Jesus picture in the paper, not the front page of the sports, the front page of the entire paper is me going like this. Wow. So God said, think about how many pictures were submitted to the paper that day. Mm. Freelance photographers, you name it. This is my brother. I remember he, play, he played for the Raiders. He played at Arizona State with Pat Tillman, Jake Plummer, all these guys. Played for the Raiders. He pulled up when the Ford Ex uh, Expeditions were new. He pulls up to the house. He has all kinds of speakers. You shouldn't even have speakers. Places you shouldn't have speakers. <laughs> and you can even hear him. He's like, man, what's going on with that? <laughs> but I remember he accomplished it. He had his jersey, and I'm just like, wow. I remember it like it was yesterday. Coming out the garage, like, wow. If he can do it, I can do it. So just being hungry. I've always been hungry. Take the mentality, nobody's going to ever outwork me. That's impossible. If we play Connect Four, you're not going to beat me. <laughs> we play dominoes, you're definitely not going to beat me. But the last thing is living by some foundational truths. My main thing is putting God first. Because he promises, if you put me first, I'll take care of the rest. So every single, what does that look like practically? As soon as I wake up, thank you. 
fall on my knees, pray, understanding that the odds are forever in my favor. It does not matter what happens, what it looks like. I may perceive it as being negative even at that time, but it's just preparing me for something greater. And then the last thing is just be willing to suffer. Hmm. Right? There's that quote that Muhammad Ali says, suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. Right? So no matter what I go through, I'm willing to go through the pain. I don't live by my emotions. I don't want to wake up at five. I don't want to do that every day. But I don't live by my feelings. There's nothing, nothing positive comes from me operating in my feelings. I have to live by principle. In order to have success, you need to be willing to suck first. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to be terrible first. Otherwise, you can never get over that hump.